This video has been brought to you by my book, Fight Mega Man for Everlasting Peace Volume 1. Check it out in the description below. Hey guys, Ryan here, and we're aboard the Popcorn Rocket here in space where nobody can hear you scream for awesome video game memories, and we are here to talk about Resident Evil again, but this time, episodes 4, 5, and 6, and the remix and Zero. Enjoy. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're talking about today is Resident Evil 4! Oh boy. Resident Evil 4. Now this game is my personal favorite in the Resident Evil series for many reasons, which I will explain in this video. And in all honesty, I could probably talk about this game forever. I can talk about this game for probably 10 hours, but don't worry, I'm not gonna make the video that long. Trust me. I actually recorded 10 hours of footage, but I'm cutting it down. Don't worry. This is what all 10 hours of the footage looks like. Resident Evil 4 rocks! Resident Evil 4 rocks! Resident Evil 4 rocks! Resident Evil 4 rocks! So I remember back in 2001, they showed previews of Resident Evil 4 with, you know, Leon in the trademark jacket. He's in this foggy, scary area with killer dolls. And the tagline was, what's Umbrella gonna do next? Oh boy, what is Umbrella gonna do next? Now, a couple of months prior to the release of this game, my friend was like, hey dude, Resident Evil 4 is not gonna have zombies. And I was like, what? How? I mean, that's like having Mario without Goombas or Bowser. Oh. And so apparently after the tired and true formula of Resident Evil of killing zombies, you know, controlling your characters like a tank and, you know, very scary environments and jump scares, um, Capcom wanted to go a different direction with Resident Evil 4. And personally, uh, they made the right choice. Because back then, um, in the early 2000s, uh, we were like, oh yeah, Resident Evil is just it's the same game where you kill zombies, but it's getting worse. Yeah, so I pre-ordered the game from my local Game Crazy, which um, doesn't exist anymore. I mean, Game Crazy was part of Hollywood Video, kind of their video game part of it. And um, when I pre-ordered it in January of 2005, um, I picked it up. I also got this really, really cool limited edition laser cell, which surprisingly isn't really worth a lot. But, you know, my unique number was 7,645 out of... 18,850. So there's quite a lot of these to go around. After that, I remember putting in the game, watching the intro, and the, one of the first things they mentioned was, Umbrella went out of business. Umbrella was finished. What? What? So all of this hype about, what's Umbrella gonna do next? They're going out of business. Totally. No more Umbrella. Wow, so maybe that claim about no zombies in the game might be true. Of course it was. And our protagonist Leon, who was the hero of Resident Evil 2, was now played by Paul Mercier, um, opposed to Paul Haddad from Resident Evil 2, and Paul Mercier does a really, really good job. I mean, I love the way he wisecracks. Where's everyone going? Bingo? I have only one very important question. Do you got a smoke? Got gum. You got a smoke? I got gum. 
I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? And the way he tries to hit on Hunnigan the entire game. Give me your number when I get back. May I remind you that you're still on duty. Story of my life. But yeah, Paul Mercier did a really, really awesome job with Leon in this game. So I remember the big first fight in the village where you have to fight the dude with the chainsaw. I think his name was Dr. Salvador. And I got killed by him. That was crazy. Yeah, so Resident Evil 4 completely ditches the pre-rendered backgrounds, the tank controls, and goes for a third-person view this time. And this time you aim your gun with a laser pointer attached to it. I do kind of miss in the previous Resident Evil games where um, you would just aim at an enemy, you would automatically aim at them, and it wouldn't be too hard to hit them. But in this game, you get used to the laser pointer really, really fast. And before you know it, you're aiming for their faces, and you're aiming for their legs like a pro, and you know, Leon can do kicks, he can do suplexes where that smashes enemies heads on the ground and splits them like lemons. I mean Leon is complete motherfucking badass in this game. Now he's a super secret agent and it shows. Yeah, and this time the enemies you know speak in both English, they speak in Spanish. And I remember my friend was with me at the time I was playing this and he was like oh oh he said behind you. I mean like how'd you know? Well I speak Spanish. Yeah, so the atmosphere in this game isn't as scary as the previous games. Um, this time you're fighting, you know, at first in the daylight, and then you fight in the village, then the castle, then the island. Um, it never really feels that scary because, you know, this game trades the scary atmosphere of the previous games. You know, like there's not that many jump scares in this game. You know, I don't really think there's a lot of jump scares at all. And this time it's more intense on your feet action in this game. Like you have to be on your toes at all times, you know, shooting enemies you know, moving around and then there's all these um, annoying quick time scenes where you have to mash buttons and you know, like Leon's running from boulders, he's like running from a giant statue. I mean, he's doing a lot of running in this game. And one of the coolest characters in this game and possibly in the Resident Evil universe is the Merchant. Got something that might interest you. <laughs> what are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> Thanks, stranger. Yeah, you should really see the Mega 64 parody of it. It's really, really funny. And of course, Leon's mission in this game is to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley Graham. I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! Who joins you uh, partway through the game. She's with you on and off. You know, she'll get kidnapped and then you'll get her back. Oh, you pervert. Leon! And then there's this one part where you have to play entirely as her, which is pretty intense because you don't have any weapons except these lanterns, which you use to kill the enemies. And then when you try to solve this puzzle, they have these armored enemies and you gotta avoid them and it's pretty crazy. So I remember uh, the game wasn't exactly super difficult. I mean, there were some hard parts and I remember the fight with the giant fish in the lake where you had to throw the harpoons in its mouth. I actually died during that battle the first time. And then I remember the fight with Bitor's Mendez in the house after the ski lift where he will bring me swift judgment. I died during that part, but I just unloaded a whole bunch of ammo in him and then I got his eyeball. I remember um, when I was playing this game, I was posting on this message board where my friends were also playing this game and my friend was like dude there's this crazy part in Resident Evil 4 where you're trapped inside this cabin and you're fighting against 40 villagers like just trying to kill you I'm like holy shit and when you actually play that part it's every bit as intense as you think it is like this game there's never a dull moment you're always on your toes all oh, something crazy is always happening every second of this game like there's barely any reprieve in this game you know, um, after that part with the villagers, the cabin, you have like two paths where you have to either fight the Chainsaw Sisters or you have to avoid the El Gigante. Yeah, I remember El Gigante. I definitely freed the dog at the beginning, which really helped because El Gigante killed me when I first fought him. I remember I had to switch to the machine gun to beat him because I kept trying to shoot with the shotgun, which is too slow. And then also the revelation behind the not zombies in this game was a parasite called the Las Plagas. And I remember seeing that villager walking towards me and then his fucking head pops off. I'm like, holy shit. I think these guys are even crazier than the zombies. They're being taken over by parasites that eat your brains. 
Oh yeah, I also do remember the part before you get into the castle, that truck is um, coming towards you, and I didn't buy the sniper rifle around this time. You know, I got past the ski lift part without the sniper rifle, and this game forces you to become good with the sniper rifle, especially when you get into the castle. And I really enjoyed the castle part of this game. And it's not like a super duper scary haunted castle. It's more of a modern castle you'll visit when you're on vacation. But this castle has a dungeon in it. And I remember the Garador where he had the Wolverine claws. He was like, rrr, 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 Wolverine the Garador. He couldn't see anything. So you had to shoot the bells and make him attack the bells. And then he'll get his claws stuck in the wall. Then you have to kill the Plogus in the back of him. I I do admit the first time I fought him, I didn't know that. I didn't even, you know, shoot the bells at all. I just kind of waited till I had a good shot and then shot him in the back multiple times. Of course, I remember walking into the dungeon. I'm like, oh God, this dude is totally going to come out, but he didn't. And so I walked back and it was like, Rrr! I was like, holy crap. And then he killed me. You know, he pilled me with his Wolverine claws. And then one part of the game I remember very well and I found super difficult at first was the part after you killed the Garador, you're in that room with the water where you had to turn the cranks and they had the scary music with the monks going, Warriors VV, Warriors VV, Elderless Capitola, we're going to kill you. Ooh, ooh. The scary music and then the part where you have to you know, move the cranks and the part where you have to lift Ashley up and I admit at this part, I didn't have the sniper rifle. And that made this part very, very difficult. So I had to go all the way back to the merchant, buy a sniper rifle. When it comes to sniper rifles and video games, I'm not very good at them. I admit, I am a complete moron when it comes to sniper rifles and video games, but I had to get used to it. And then Ashley gets kidnapped. And then you had to go down into the dungeons, it's kind of the sewer area, where you had to fight the giant bugs. I think they call them the Novistadors. And I was a complete moron trying to figure out where they were because they go invisible and shit. Oh yeah, and speaking of me being a moron, I've always been a moron when it came to the puzzles in Resident Evil games, and the puzzles in this game were not very difficult at all. I didn't have to go to GameFAQs to look up puzzles. And then Ramon Salazar, you know, he looks like this little shrimp with gray hair. But he's only 20 years old, but he talks like this. Then get off my back, old man! <gasps> Did you say old man, Mr. Kennedy? It might come as a surprise, but I'm only 20 years old. I really didn't like that guy. I'm so glad when he died. And then the maze part. Even if it takes your whole life. You'll never get out. The maze part was pretty intense with the killer dog, like Rrr. But it wasn't super difficult. I just found it more intense than anything. You know, there's the dogs in the cage. Then they break out of the cage and you have to kill them. And then after that part is over, you encounter Ada again, who survived from Resident Evil 2. Ada, you're working with Wesker. But the good news is Ada is still played by the legendary Sally Cahill. And she also had those shades that act as a flashbang. Here, catch! See you around. And then we are reunited again with our buddy Luis, and then boom, Sadler kills him. Oh. Luis! Poor Luis, I missed you. <laughs> Luis. And then there's our part where you had to avoid all those traps, especially that drill. I was like, oh, oh crap, there's a drill trying to kill me here, but hey, I got totally past that and then after that there was that part where you have to fight the Las Plagas in the armor. Uh, I didn't find this part super difficult. I didn't discover that you can use the flash grenade against them till my second playthrough. I really really wish I knew that during my first playthrough. Then Ashley gets kidnapped by the giant bugs and then there's a part in the tower you have to kill two Garadors but luckily there's a rocket launcher you get before that, and you can just kill them that way. And then you confront Salazar, hopefully trying to end it once and for all. And then he throws you into a pit. But Leon's like, you know what? I'm not gonna fall for this trap. Don't fall for this old trick. Yeah. Hey, asshole. Bang. <laughs> oh, man. No more games. Kill him. 
I fucking love Leon in this game. He's such a badass and he's such a wisecracker and he's just even more of a smart ass too. Say whatever you please. Die you worm! And then the part at the bottom of the elevator where you have to fight Salazar's right hand, Vertigo. And I remember how fucking intense this part was. I didn't exactly kill him the first time, but I remember like, come on, the elevator, it has to go on. Oh my God, this fucking thing is chasing after me. And then one of my least favorite parts about the game was when you're down in the tunnels in the minecart and all the crazy villagers are coming after you from left and right, behind, and you're like, ugh, fucking minecarts. And then the giant Salazar statue chases you. Yeah, this Salazar guy is pretty fucking narcissistic, isn't he? To build a giant statue of him to chase out the intruders. Damn, that thing is fucking huge. This castle is a barrel of fun, isn't it? And then we finally reach the end of the castle where you fight Salazar. And the funny thing is, um, I had enough money to buy a rocket launcher and you know, I was just so sick of this guy's shit. I just fired a rocket launcher and the fight was over. I confess I've never beaten Salazar legitimately with my weapons. I just always had the rocket launcher and I just killed him with it. Then in the original GameCube version, we go into disc two. Leon and Ada are on the boat. You know, Leon's like, hey, Ada. I'm like, story of my life. First time again, then Ada. I just can't, you know, find a date in the Resident Evil universe. And it doesn't get better in the movies and Resident Evil 6. And then the island. Yeah, and actually, actually what's cool about the island is the music that plays during that first battle, like... And you're finding those dudes with the scarves on their faces, and then you're finding those dudes with the machine guns. And then it's that part where the Ganado just comes out of the fryer like... Aah! Wow, looks like he had a pretty hot time in the kitchen. Eh, eh, okay, that joke was wrong. I'm sorry. And the craziest part of the island were the regenerators. During the time I was playing this game, you know, there wasn't that many facts, uh, game facts, you know, I didn't even use a fact for this game, period. So I didn't pay attention to the instructions I got, and I tried to kill the regenerators with the shotgun, but they kept regenerating. And then I read on a message board that I had to use the thermal scope on the sniper rifle, which this game forces you to get really good with the sniper rifle, and you had to kill the Plagueses on their bodies. And it took a little while to do so, but these guys were motherfucking crazy ass mofos. And because this game is never a dull moment, I remember the part where you're driving the bulldozer and Ganados are just like jumping out everywhere, everywhere. And then once you're done with that fun piece of fun. And then Osmond Sadler mind controls Ashley with the Plagos in her body, taking her away from you. Ashley can never stay out of trouble in this game. Of course, it's a Resident Evil game. I mean, it's a video game. The damsel in distress is never going to be safe. Ever. And then Leon fights his old buddy, Jack Krauser, in a knife fight, which looks so incredibly badass, but it's entirely a quick time battle, which I can't stand quick time battles. It would have been cool just to fight with the knife, just kind of like the way you do, but I mean, why did it have to be quick time battles? You know, and there's that cool part where Leon just sits on his throne like... Yeah, I'm Leon. Oh wait, the president's daughter is kidnapped. I still gotta find her. Yeah, and I really love that part where you avoid the lasers. Even though I died several times trying to get past and you know, Leon is dodging them all Matrix style and shit. Secret government agent training. Gotta avoid them lasers. And then there's the part where you fight it. What's it? Oh, it! He's, you know, the dude that attacks you in that cargo box place and then you have to drop the cargo, but it still survives. Um, I didn't find it super hard. Uh, I just lured him to the barrels and I killed him that way. But that fight was pretty intense. Good job, Capcom. And then I remember the fight with Krauser in those ruins. Uh, I actually died a couple of times because Krauser keeps moving around. I honestly kind of sucked at this fight because you have to fight Krauser, you have to shoot him at his feet and he's like dodging shit. And then he has the mutated arm. You know, I just had to just unload a whole bunch of ammo on him and I killed him that way. Then Leon and Ada reunite once again. And then Leon's like, Ada, I'm being controlled by the Plagas. Ada must die! 
you know, just kind of like a Homer Simpson jokes, Bart. And then, for the first time in this game, you finally get some help from your buddy Mike in the helicopter. I like Mike. Mike was cool. Like, Mike killed a lot of shit. And then Mike dies. Mike! God bless you, Mike. Leon was gonna buy you a drink. Now, after removing the Plagas, Osman Sadler finally fights you and says, It's just like your Hollywood movies, but it won't end that way. I actually beat Sadler on the first try. He wasn't that hard. And then you kill him. Typical Resident Evil style with the rocket launcher. Although I had a little more trouble after you do beat him and you're on the jet skis, I've crashed too many times during that part, but I eventually beat it. Very cute. Saw the ending, but was it over? So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, um, overtime? Was Leon gonna have overtime with the president's daughter? You know, the only girl in the series who's made some kind of advance towards him because Leon's luck with the woman is bad? No. He still, you know, dreams about Ada. He's a part of him who he couldn't let go. She's like a part of me I can't let go. Let's leave it at that. And, you know, part of this game we couldn't let go. Because we had Assignment Ada as the bonus. Which was pretty easy to beat. And probably one of my favorite things about Resident Evil 4 was Mercenaries mode. Like, I remember Mercenaries in Resident Evil 3, I wasn't really good at, but they perfected it in Resident Evil 4, and it was super addicting. I got so good at Mercenaries with all the characters, you know, Leon, Hunk, Krauser, Ada, and the badass himself. Albert Wesker. I was able to unlock the hand cannon to use in the main game, and the hand cannon was awesome, just like the Chicago typewriter. And then a couple of months later, we got word that Resident Evil 4 was going to be ported to the PlayStation 2, and I remember the producer of Resident Evil 4 saying, if they port this to the PlayStation 2, I'm going to chop my head off. I guess that's why he chopped his head off. Yeah, the PlayStation 2 version actually played really well. Um, there were some minor blemishes, but they weren't super noticeable. Um, I remember renting it, I didn't really purchase the game, and I beat it really quickly. And it also has this really, really cool mode, Separate Ways, which you are Ada Wong, and you play like the parts of Ada that you didn't get to see in the main game. And you do see what happens to Leon's jacket. And I thought Separate Ways was a really, really, really good addition to the game that didn't really take away a lot from it. And then after that, they released the Wii version, which I also purchased. I didn't really play it with the Wii mode because I didn't like having to you know, wave my hand to shoot enemies. I just put a GameCube controller and I beat it again. And this time you get the Plagas removal laser, which is really cool. And then after that, they released this game on Xbox Live in HD. And then on PC. And now it's out on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Although, <laughs> by that time I've been Resident Evil 4 out, so I just bought the PC version because I felt that was the you know most complete version with everything, and, and it plays in HD anyways. So Resident Evil 4, wow. I mean, I've talked a lot about this game, man. and I could talk about this game forever, but do you know why I love this game? You know, Capcom was starting to see that the Resident Evil series was getting a bit stale, so they decided to take it in another direction, and they did a really good job. I mean, I like the third-person view, I love the action, I mean, I love wisecracking Leon, I mean, I love the characters in this game, even the villains. I mean, those villains, Ganados and the Las Plagas, I mean, these guys were pretty menacing, especially the priests like, Morias Vivi, Morias Vivi, you know, like the villagers, you know, yelling at each other, saying, Get from behind, you know, we got the chainsaw. And yeah, I love the environments, you know, I love the village. I mean, I especially love the castle. I mean, that room with the lava was pretty awesome. Although uh, the producers thought that the castle dragged on for a bit, which I totally disagree. I mean, I love the castle. I mean, I love castles. You know, and there's the island. I mean, I just love the part where the fucking dude in the furnace jumps out. Ah! Yeah, and you get to see the laboratory where you finally remove the Las Plagas. I mean, it's a pretty fitting end to the game. 
And what's also cool about the PC version, I mean the original PC version that wasn't really that good, they released a couple years later, there was a funny modding community for this. I saw a mod where you can play as Link in this game. Like Link killing Ganados, I mean that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, so does Resident Evil 4 hold up today? You're damn right it does! And where can you get Resident Evil 4? Actually, the question is where can't you get Resident Evil 4? I mean, I don't have the GameCube version anymore. Uh, I do have it for Xbox Live. I sold off my Wii version. I also have it for the PC, which is an HD, just like the Xbox Live version. Um, I haven't really played through it because I played through the GameCube version 11 times. 11 times on normal, and I beat it only two times on professional. And the Xbox Live version I beat twice. Um, I haven't really played much of the PC version, which I probably will. It'll be one of those games I'll play when I'm bored. But yeah, I mean, I do plan on playing it again, for sure, definitely. <laughs> I loved Resident Evil 4 so much that I did an anime music video to it, to Madonna's Die Another Day, which actually won me a couple awards. You can check it out here. Yeah, so that wraps up this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Resident Evil 4. Make sure to buy any incarnation of this game that you can get. So, Hunnigan, how about I get your number? Because, you know, I just saved the world from... You know, the Lost Plagas, I rescued the President's daughter. May I remind you that you're still on duty. Story of my life. Story of my life. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Resident Evil 5! So after the awesomeness that was Resident Evil 4, it was only natural that I would be super mega excited for Resident Evil 5 because I knew that Capcom was going to continue using the awesome third person action view of Resident Evil 4, which made it so awesome. And I remember seeing a Japanese magazine scan of this game and this American site was like, you know, this is going to be the protagonist of Resident Evil 5. We don't know who he is, but I read the katakana on it and it said Kurisu and I was like, dude, that's Chris Redfield. So I messaged my friend saying, dude, the protagonist of Resident Evil 5 is going to be Chris Redfield. And he was like, no, it's not. That guy doesn't look like Chris. And I was like, well, dude, the, um, the Japanese katakana in the article says it's going to be Chris. It says Kurisu. And he's like, what the fuck? Kurisu doesn't mean Chris. And like, you don't know Japanese. But I do know the katakana said Kurisu. He's like, you're lame. Fuck you. And this is why I don't talk to that asshole anymore. You know, so as the months progressed, uh, they were showing more previews and they definitely confirmed this was Chris Redfield. And you're gonna find out what happened to Chris between Resident Evil Code Veronica until now. And so as the game was getting closer to release, people were saying a certain rumor that one of my favorite heroes of the Resident Evil franchise, Jill Valentine, had passed away and I didn't want to believe it at first and then I saw the picture of Chris standing at Jill's grave no no this this can't be happening this can't be happening oh Jill Jill <laughs> Okay, sorry about that, folks. I mean... <laughs> you were my Valentine, oh, Jill. Yeah, so I remember in December of 2008, um, a couple of months before the game released in March 2009, this message board released, or specifically leaked out the Japanese demo that you had to burn to a DVD-ROM, and then you can play it off your Xbox 360. Um, I didn't have 
a modded Xbox 360 to play, but you could still play it without the modded Xbox. I remember the first two levels that they had in the game were Bernard Fisher gets his head chopped off and you have to fight the Executioner, which was really, really intense. I remember my nephew came over and we played that. And then the other demo level was the level where you fought the dude with the chainsaw and you had to do some co-op where you had to let Sheva jump to another ledge. Um, I remember the chainsaw guy being pretty easy to beat. So I also remember the helicopter. The guy was like, oh my God, what the fuck are those? And we were like, what the fuck are those? Are they dropping the F word in Resident Evil? Although Leon dropped the uh, shit in Resident Evil 4. So I guess that's where they're going. Oh yeah, there was also a Resident Evil outbreak where that guy was like, my life is shit. Yeah, so I pre-ordered the game from Best Buy, picked it up from Best Buy, brought it home, played it, saw Chris driving around with his sunglasses, but he didn't wear them as cool as Albert Wesker, who does appear in this game. Because he's Albert Wesker. And we are introduced to our lovely partner, Sheva Elamar, who accompanies you the entire game, unlike Ashley from Resident Evil 4, who gets kidnapped, kind of an on and off type of thing. She is with you the entire game and they do the multiplayer in this game really well. Actually, I remember playing the first couple levels with my friend and then playing the last couple of levels with my friend. And then when I finished the game the first time, my friend was like, oh, hey, could you uh, play the game with me so uh, I can you know, unlock a whole bunch of stuff? So yeah, the co-op in this game was done really well. So I remember this game being really, really short compared to Resident Evil 4. Because I remember, like I mentioned in the Resident Evil 4 video, the developers thought the castle part went on a bit too long. And for Resident Evil 5, they wanted to make it more of a, a straight up action game that you can replay multiple times. Because when you beat this game, you can carry on the weapons you had onto higher difficulty levels. I ended up beating all the difficulty levels of this game, even expert. Because I had all the best weapons anyways, which I just farmed in the lower difficulty levels and I just bought them all and I was able to play them in the final difficulty level. Although the fight with El Gigante in the car was very difficult in expert mode. Well, and also what made the game length short were the levels were very, very short. Um, I remember the fight with the Executioner went by pretty quickly. And I also remember most of the you know little sections as you go through the game are really, really short. And there were a lot of cutscenes, which did take up the majority of the game. I remember um, Ricardo Irving, that really annoying guy. He was like, boom, fireworks, oh my god, yes! Just in time for the fireworks show! Boom! <laughs> He was kind of like the evil version of Roger Rabbit. I was just waiting for him to go, B -b -b please, Chris, you don't have to kill me. You'll never see Jill again. Oh, I'm gonna pick myself with the Plagas because I failed. Hopping in the ocean as the big Plagas monster, and I like. Blah, 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 blah. Italian's not so bad, but it's not gonna change anything. You still screwed. We've been trying here, Chris. Yeah, I didn't like this guy. I'm glad he's dead. Poor bastard. And also remember, you know, the boss encounters weren't exactly difficult. They weren't exactly super memorable until the last couple of ones, which I won't spoil till later. And also what does kind of suck about this game, like the first four games, including Code of Veronica, had a good scary atmosphere, but most of the time in this game, you were fighting in the daylight against Maginis, which are the Ganados of this game, because you know, the zombies still aren't back yet. And this time, the Los Plagas was advanced. Now the they take over the Maginis of Africa really, really quickly. And so you're fighting those, and they didn't really, you know, give you as much of a fight like most of the enemies in Resident Evil before they didn't cooperate, they didn't, you know, knock down doors to get to you. Um, I mean, yeah, they still climb ladders, but yeah, they didn't provide much of a challenge compared to Resident Evil 4. 
So yeah, we do get a lot of lackluster levels. I still remember that part where, you know, Josh is activating the computer and he had to defend him. Um, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be just like the cabin fight in Resident Evil 4. Nah, it wasn't. You know, just shoot the enemies as they come and that's kind of it, really. And then we got the flashback where we saw how Jill died. Uh, they tracked, you know, Spencer Oswell to his estate in Europe. And then they had the big Matrix fight with Wesker. Yeah, like a whole bunch of people were comparing this game to the Matrix. You know, Wesker had his jacket, you know, doing all the crazy ass martial art moves. You know, he slides Chris on that table and he's about to kill him. Well, Chris, you're about to die. But oh shit, Jill. Ah! And then we apparently fall to our deaths, but not really, because I keep Jill in captivity, and you know, I probably had my way with her, you know what I mean? Because I'm Albert Wesker. And Excella, you're nobody. And then we go into this cave, into this lab. Oh, hey, these flowers were the originators of the progenitor virus. Oh, hey, we're in this temple. Oh, hey, more quick time scenes, which I didn't fucking like in Resident Evil 4, now they brought him back. And then, oh hey, the liquors are back. That's kind of cool, right? No. And then, we finally get the big reveal of the masked person. And it was... Jill. You're alive. You're alive. Well, your hair is a bit more blonde, then you look a little pale after years of captivity in Wesker's laboratory, and yeah, Wesker, you're alive. But of course I am. I'm Albert Wesker. Jill, give me a hug. Ah! Whoa. Whoa, Jill. Okay, I know you're pretty mad that, you know, you weren't recovered. Of course, they couldn't recover the bodies. It's not the BSAA's fault. But yeah, um, I remember this fight was pretty tough. Uh, you have to fight Jill and Wesker at the same time. And after a little while, Wesker goes away and then you have to fight Jill. <laughs> the ultimate tragic fight. Jill, come back to me. And you couldn't exactly you know, shoot Jill a lot or else she died. You have to pull that thing off her chest. And then eventually, you remove the thing from her chest, and Jill says, You have to beat Wesker, Chris. You have to beat Wesker. And the most coolest music plays. Yeah. And then you go on a ship, and then Excella Gione comes out. Albert! Oh, the Uroboros comes out. And then you have to kill that giant thing. We find out from Jill, Wesker has a weakness. And I remember this fight where you had to fire a rocket launcher at him and then inject him and then he escapes in this plane and then he goes into all Hollywood comic book villain mode. He's like, I don't need anybody else. I have Uroboros. I don't need anyone else. <laughs> Complete global saturation. Complete global saturation. It's time to die, Chris. Time to die, Chris. I'm not destroying the world. I'm saving it. Oh wait, he doesn't have sunglasses anymore. And then we land in a volcano where he absorbs Uroboros by punching a missile. Yeah, he's Albert Wesker. He can punch missiles. And then we have the most awesome part where Chris punches boulders like it's nothing. Man, he's like totally roided up in this game. I'm Chris Redfield. Been working out a bit in between games, you know. And then we have Wesker trying to kill you in the helicopter. And then you fire rocket launchers at him just like you killed the tyrant, Resident Evil style. And that is the end of Albert Wesker. Alas, Wesker, we knew you well. Your sunglasses have now been laid to rest. And that was the end of Resident Evil 5, which I beat in two whole days. 
two whole days. You could basically rent this game over a weekend and finish it. But I did replay the game enough times to unlock all the weapons and get unlimited ammo for them. And then there was Mercenaries, which was really, really well done. And you had co-op mode. I mean, I got really good using Star's Wesker uh, with the shotgun and then using his move to kill uh, the genies and the executioners. And then after that, we got the DLC for this game, Lost in Nightmares and Desperate Escape, where in Lost in Nightmares is when you actually track Oswald E. Spencer down to his European mansion, which looks a lot like the first game's mansion. And you can actually do a trick where you can play the static camera angles in this game. And the best part about this DLC was you had to fight the Keeper with the axe, or I think they call him something else according to the Resident Evil wiki. I'll, I'll, I'll put it here. And yeah, the part where you're down in the sewer and you have to avoid him, and especially on expert mode where they get rid of the map, adds a lot more intensity to this game. I really, really enjoyed Lost in Nightmares. It would be cool if they redid the first Resident Evil for the 10 millionth time, you know, in this way. I think that would be really awesome. And then you have Desperate Escape where you're playing as Josh and Jill and you have to fight a shit ton of Maginis in this game. I didn't exactly complete this game on all difficulty levels because it just got really hard, especially on expert mode. Yeah, so Resident Evil 5, I don't know where they went wrong with this game. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a very, very solid action game. but. It just feels so underwhelming compared to Resident Evil 4. I mean, all the polish, and all the gameplay, and all the, you know, little things that they did for Resident Evil 4 were done so, so well, but Resident Evil 5 just felt like a straight up action game. Like the atmosphere was just not as scary. I mean, it's not even scary at all. I mean, you still had, you know, the crazy creatures, you know, no, no zombies, you had giant bosses, and you had Albert Wesker. But yeah, the game just felt underwhelming as a whole. I actually did buy the PC version where you can play a more enhanced version of Mercenaries where there's way more enemies on screen, which I did find pretty awesome though. So I would say Mercenaries was the saving grace of this game. It was definitely more fast paced, and, you know, more intense. Uh, you got to switch weapons on the fly. And there was more enemies and it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so Resident Evil 5, um, it failed to capture the magic of Resident Evil 4, but I still recommend it. It's still a very solid action game, you know, you get to play as Chris Redfield, you get to see what happens to Jill Valentine, and you finally see the final fate of Albert Wesker. So the question is, where can't you get this game? I mean, the Xbox version and PS3 versions are pretty cheap, I mean, and they were offered for free on Xbox Live and PS Plus. Uh, you can get the PC versions, and you can get them for the Xbox One and the PS4. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan. And the game we're gonna talk about today is Resident Evil 6. I'm sorry, I got nothing. So what happens when you take Call of Duty Zombies, combine it with Resident Evil, and try to make a campaign about it? You get Resident Evil 6. Now, I admit, I was initially excited about this game because I got to play as Leon again, and I was going to play as Chris again, and Sherry Birkin was coming back. From what I heard, there were rumors in Resident Evil 5 that Sherry Birkin was going to come back, but, you know, those rumors weren't true. So yeah, we had a lot of familiar faces coming back, and Ada Wong was coming back. But this time, uh, Leon is voiced by Matthew Mercer rather than Paul Mercier. I didn't really think about it so much, but Matt Mercer does a really good job of capturing the same feel as Paul Mercier that I couldn't really tell the difference, so good job, Matt. So I remember playing the demo of this game before it came out. It was the level where Leon and Helena were in the college campus after the president dies, uh, President Zombie, <laughs> or you can call him President Evil. <laughs> yeah, that joke's pretty old. Yeah, and the great thing about Resident Evil 6 is the zombies are back! After two games where you had parasite-infected enemies, the zombies finally returned, this time infected by the C-Virus. Because, you know, the A-Virus and the B-Virus probably didn't really work out for them. 
Although the C virus was tough enough to infect the president. So playing the demo, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it, but a couple of things felt a bit off. It was cool that we finally got a melee button. So Leon could finally just kick things. Um, like, yeah, your characters can finally fight back without weapons or without using their weapons. But something about the demo just really felt off in a way. Like, I think it suffered the too much crap on screen syndrome. Like there was tons of zombies, there was tons of detail. And also it was trying to cram everything in and the gameplay just felt really clunky. I don't know why, it felt much clunkier than Resident Evil's 4 and 5. And Resident Evil's 4 and 5, you know, played really well, but 6 just felt so clunky. I bought the game when it came out for the Xbox 360, and the first scenario I chose was Leon's, because Leon is my favorite hero in the Resident Evil series, but he doesn't do a lot of wisecracking. Even though Matt Mercer does a really awesome job, he doesn't have a lot to work with in this game. And I remember, you know, getting past the university part, which really dragged on for a while, and then you're in the caves, and one of the biggest complaints I had about this game was the level design. And the level design, oh god, like really, 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 really dragged on in this game. I mean, I mean, the university part wasn't so bad, but the cave part dragged on. Chris's part in China dragged on. Uh, Sherry's part in the mountains really dragged on. You know, Ada's part in the submarine really dragged on. This game really, really dragged on. Because I know Resident Evil 4, the developers felt the castle part went on too long. So Resident Evil 5 was a lot shorter, was a more action-oriented game. And Resident Evil 6 was just make the levels long just for the hell of it. This man, this game just went on. Like in Leon scenario, it took for ever to get to a Helena's sister who became like a sea virus zombie creature thingamabobber. And oh yes, the quick time events were back. And we all know how the quick time events in Resident Evil games are my favorite thing. But hey, they got rid of the puzzles at least. Because I was a fucking moron when it came to puzzles. And so in Leon's scenario, you get the China. And then, uh, at least China didn't drag on as much as the cave part. And then you fought the final boss, Derek Simmons. You know, the sea virus, zombie god, T-Rex thing. What the hell? I mean, Derek Simmons like went through so many forms. You had to fight him on the land, in the air, in the helicopter. Derek Simmons just wouldn't give up. He was a motherfucking T-Rex. Well, C virus zombie T-Rex thing with Bobber. So then Leon and Helena's scenario ends, then I moved on to Chris's scenario, which was basically Call of Duty Zombies. Yeah, with my partner Piers. And there's not a lot I really want to say about Chris's scenario, besides the fact that he was drunk Bitch! in Europe, and then you fought giant zombie monsters, and then more zombie monsters, and then after that Piers gets infected in the ship, which I actually did feel kind of sad for. And then Jake, the son of Albert Wesker, asks about his father, and Chris is like, your father was a fucking asshole. I don't need anyone else. I have Ouroboros. And then poor Pierce sacrifices himself. We beat that scenario. And then we have Jake and Sherry scenario. Yeah, Jake. The son of Wesker was a mercenary and his mother was like, your father probably loves you and he's a good man. Well, he's cool because he has sunglasses, but no, he was an asshole. I'm sorry, Jake. Chris said it best. But it was pretty cool. You got to play as Sherry Birkin from Resident Evil 2. Now all grown up, she's a secret agent and she has healing properties from the G-Virus. And then you're in this snow mountain with this big dude Ustinak who chases you throughout the entire world. Then you're in China, then you're in these uh, mine carts with lava where you have to kill Ustinak. And then you unlock the final scenario, Ada Wong's. And this time she's not played by the legendary Sally Cahill. The new voice actress is okay, she doesn't do that great of a job. And then you find out there was a clone of Ada made out of a girl named Carla, you know, who was I think Derek Simmons' lover, I, mean, I don't fucking know. I mean, there is a lot of backstory to this, but 
I was just I was just playing this game just to complete it. I couldn't really care much about it because it was trying to be Call of Duty at the same time. And then, you know, all the scenarios tied together. Uh, you beat Dinosaur Zombie Derek Simmons, you beat Carla, and then the game's over. But the good thing is we got mercenaries out of it. I didn't really play a lot because I was just so... Like, I didn't care much for Resident Evil 6, to be honest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this video is a lot lackluster compared to Resident Evil 4 and 5. Um, but a lot of people agree Resident Evil 6 was just not as good as those games. Even as good as a lot of the previous games in the series as a whole. Yeah, Resident Evil 6 really felt like Call of Duty Zombies with the Resident Evil name attached to it. I mean, this could have been a completely different game, to be honest, because it, it just stopped feeling like Resident Evil. Okay, so I'm glad we have the zombies back because, you know, they are the staple enemies of the series, but everything else about Resident Evil 6 felt really lackluster. I mean, we don't have the scary environments, we don't have the intensity of Resident Evil 4 and 5. I mean, I really never felt that much in danger in this game. I mean, there were some difficult parts, but man, this game just dragged on. On, like the levels were so freaking long. I just couldn't wait for the levels in this game to be over. And we did get a lot of good backstory though. I did like the reason why Derek Simmons kidnaps some um, Helena's sister and turns her into the zombie creature. You know, which added a bit of dramatic weight to the story. I also felt a bit sad when Piers got infected. He had to sacrifice himself to save Chris, and so Chris could beat the game. And then there's Sherry and Jake. I kind of cared a little more for Jake than I did for Sherry, but it was cool seeing Sherry again. Yeah, and I actually did like the story between Derek, Ada, and Carla, and how Carla becomes an Ada clone, which was pretty messed up. But uh, the game was just so lackluster, to be honest. Yeah, so Resident Evil 6, um, you can get it on the Xbox and the PS3, you can get it for the PC, and you can also get it for the PS4 and the Xbox One, but I highly recommend just waiting for the price to go down, and definitely get it on a Steam sale when it goes down. I mean, I got it for five bucks, which is what I think the game is really worth. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're talking about today is Resident Evil The Remake. So the original Resident Evil on the PlayStation was a great but flawed game, but still mostly great. So when I heard that Capcom was gonna remake Resident Evil for the GameCube, in like super duper high definition graphics, well 480p at the time, I was like, holy shit, they're gonna make an already scary game even scarier. Wow. I remember going to GameSpot for most of my coverage on the Resident Evil remake for the GameCube and looking at those screen caps, dude, just look at them. Back in 2002, screen caps like this blew our fucking minds. So this was 2002, which is post-Code Veronica and pre-Resident Evil 4. So looking at the screen caps of Resident Evil and comparing them to the Resident Evil 4, uh, the, you know, the beta version of Resident Evil 4, I think Capcom was definitely heading in the right direction this year. Because the Resident Evil 4 preview looked very scary, and the Resident Evil remake looked very scary, and I remember actually picking this game up from Toys R Us of all places, you know, where a kid can be a kid. I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. They got a million toys and Toys R Us that I can play with. I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. I'm buying violent video games like Resident Evil there. Because from bikes to trains to video games, I get to blow off zombies' heads. I don't want to grow up, and if I did, I wouldn't have bought Resident Evil, the remake there. I want to be a Toys R Us kid. I don't want to grow up, don't want to grow up, I want to be a Toys R Us kid. So I remember putting in the game in my GameCube, and seeing that body bag move in the coroner's office, then BAM! It gets shot. That did not prepare me for things to come. To say that the GameCube version of Resident Evil is a remake is a huge understatement. Not only is it a remake of the original game, 
it adds in a lot, and I mean a lot of new things that make this game a completely brand new experience compared to the original Resident Evil. Of course, we still have our favorite characters, Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Rebecca Chambers, Barry Burton, and the badass himself, Albert Weska, who actually doesn't talk like this. He actually talks like his original 1996 self, but less exaggerated. He doesn't talk like his villainish voice. He uses it Code Veronica and every other game after that. And of course, we have brand new, not cheesy voice acting, and it's actually pretty good. Although you're gonna end up missing a lot of the classic lines. Now, if you thought the mansion in the original Resident Evil was scary, you ain't seen nothing yet. The mansion in the remake is not only a million times scarier than it was in the previous PlayStation version, they add in a lot more new rooms, they add in a lot more new traps, I mean holy shit. This is what I meant when I said, yeah, it's not really the same game, it's actually almost a brand new experience. And also, like I mentioned before in the previous Resident Evil videos, I am a complete moron when it comes to solving the puzzles in this game, and with new rooms came new puzzles. And wow, I remember really getting stuck in a lot of the puzzles in this game. Oh man. And in this game, they had a new breed of enemies called the Crimson Heads. And Crimson Heads are zombies that you kill, but they're not like, you know, dead dead. And after an extended amount of time, they come back to life with extended claws and they hunt you. But there are ways to get rid of Crimson Heads, like you can blow their heads off with a shotgun while they're regular zombies, or you can get kerosene and fry them. You set zombies on fire in this game. Burn, zombies, burn! Yeah, so what I also found very unique about this game is you can actually rescue Richard Aiken from the poison, but he's still gonna die to Neptune the shark, but it is actually a good variation on the original game. So in the previous version, Richard dies by Yon the Snake, but now he dies by Neptune the Shark. And this is a couple of years before Sharknado. Now, the craziest thing they added in this game, which I feel that really gives it a true unique experience compared to the original, is Lisa fucking Trevor. Holy shit, she is like the female nemesis of this game. And I think they actually made the nemesis from her, uh, you know, her genes, or cells or whatever, or they based the G-Virus off her cells, but yeah, Lisa fucking Trevor, oh shit. When I played this game for the first time, there were not like a lot of guides or facts on it, and Lisa Trevor was a brand new thing that we did not expect. Ugh, I have no face, I'm gonna just hit you. <laughs> yeah, Lisa Trevor had a really, really tragic backstory dating back to the 60s when the mansion was built. They injected her with, you know, the Ebola virus, with the AIDS virus, and then the progenitor virus. Jesus Christ, Umbrella. How cruel can you be to, like, one person? No wonder you went out of business. Oh, wait. You were cruel to thousands of people. That's why you went out of business. And I also remember that house she has, like in the tunnels and shit. Oh, man, that was a pretty scary looking place. And she like knocks you out, but doesn't really kill you. Yeah, because according to the files, Lisa is still obsessed with her mother. So she rips the faces off people and puts them on her. Yeah, and also Barry can actually die to Lisa Trevor if you let him. Yeah, so concerning the challenge and the puzzles of this game, yeah, there are a lot new different puzzles and I was a complete moron, but I definitely powered on through it, but that really added a lot to my playtime. I remember when I finished the game, my playtime was over like eight hours. <laughs> yeah, but I actually do recall that there are a lot less hunters in the game because they're mostly replaced with crimson heads. And I think the crimson heads are about as shitty as the hunters. Fuck those guys. Yeah, so when you beat the game, you get this new mode called One Dangerous Zombie where Horst Spire, you know, the guy who was killed by crows and who is one of Chris's best friends in marksmanship, he comes after you the entire game and if you shoot him, the entire mansion blows up. I never really got far in this mode. Yeah, so the Resident Evil remake, you know, I'm really glad Capcom decided to remake this game. 
Yeah, so don't get me wrong, the original Resident Evil is still a fantastic game despite its numerous flaws, but the remake actually improves a lot on Resident Evil. And at the same time, it still stands out as its own entity rather than trying to replace it. Like, let's say I consider the Resident Evil remake more of a tribute to the Resident Evil rather than a remake trying to replace the game. Yeah, so with that said, I definitely recommend playing both versions of the game. So definitely play the original PlayStation version first, and then play the remake. Yeah, so where can you get this game? Yeah, the remake for the GameCube doesn't really go for that much on eBay, but now you can get the remake on the PC, the PS3, the Xbox One, the PS4, and yeah, so that wraps up this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about the Resident Evil remake. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Resident Evil Zero? Yeah, so Resident Evil Zero was quite a surprise. I remember as early as 2000, after I finished Code Veronica, I saw some previews of Resident Evil Zero on the N64, with early pictures showing Rebecca with a beret. Of course, my biggest concern was, is it going to have loading time like Resident Evil 2 on the N64? Of course, it was scrapped and then was moved to the GameCube, which was the more obvious choice since the GameCube was coming out very soon. So my first experience with this game back in 2002 was I went to a convention and there was a game room and some people were playing the Japanese version Biohazard Zero, which had the English voice acting but Japanese text. And I saw people controlling both Billy and Rebecca on the train, but I didn't know anything that was going on. And then I think a month later, the game actually came out in America. So how were you going to make a prequel to the original Resident Evil? And actually, the great thing about the intro is you get to see the Stars Bravo team alive. Like, you get to see Kenneth is alive. You get to see Forrest Spire is not a zombie. You get to see Enrico. And he's not like, yeah. And then you see Richard, who hasn't been bitten by the snake yet. And then there's Kevin the pilot, and there's Edward Dewey! Edward Dewey, who was mentioned in the original Resident Evil PlayStation manual. And even before that, he was meant to be like an Eddie Murphy comic relief character in the original Resident Evil. Which they didn't need, because the game was comic relief on its own. And I remember bringing this over to a friend's house, and he was like, Is that the King of the Zombies? Well, he kind of was responsible for the outbreak in Resident Evil 1, so you can kind of say that, but more accurately, he's more of the Leech King. Don't worry, I'll explain who he is in a bit. So aside the zombies, the big bad enemies in this game are the leeches. And this game has a bit of a fascination with giant bugs. <laughs> like, you fight a giant scorpion on the train, like, holy shit, that thing is huge. And you fight really creepy leech men, like leeches that come together to form human shapes, like ugh. And you have a compatriot in this game, Lieutenant Billy Cohen, who is actually going to jail because he is accused of a murder he didn't do while he was in the Marines, and I actually found him pretty cool. You know, he's kind of the badass, handcuffed, former Marine hero, who sadly doesn't make another appearance after this game. Yeah, I actually would have liked the spin-off Billy Cohen. Zombie Hunter. And also the big gameplay mechanic is you get to switch between Rebecca and Billy at any time, but there are a lot of times you have to have Rebecca solve a puzzle there, have Billy solve a puzzle there. And the thing I actually don't like about this game is, unlike Resident Evil 2 which had a good flow, there is a lot of backtracking. A little less than Resident Evil Code Veronica, but there is still a lot of backtracking in Resident Evil Zero. And there are a lot of moments where you have to leave one player behind to have one player solve a puzzle. You have to have one player like send a key up to the other player. There's a lot of puzzles like this and it kind of disrupts the flow of the game in my opinion. Which makes me glad they really improved the co-op in Resident Evil 5. And yeah, let's talk more about the enemy variety. Like you have to fight killer monkeys in this game. Killer zombie monkeys called the Eliminators. I am not joking. And then you have giant frogs, and then the leeches, the zombies, the dogs. Yeah, there are a huge variety of creatures in Resident Evil Zero. And also you get to fight a tyrant. 
are more like a proto tyrant. And actually what is pretty cool, you get to see Enrico down in the lab from Resident Evil 2, although you don't get to explore more of it, but it was a pretty cool throwback or more of a pre-throwback to Resident Evil 2. And now the big baddie, the big king of the zombies like my friend called it, or I just call him the Leech King, Mr. or Dr. James Marcus. Who the fuck is James Marcus? Yeah, so James Marcus was killed by Umbrella, and then William Birkin and Albert Wesker inherited his research, but then the big queen leech went down to Marcus's dead body and then revived him and made him young and he could turn him old. So he was the leech king, King Leech Marcus. Although it was pretty cool that you do kill Marcus by sunlight. And luckily the battle isn't like super hard. Yeah, so after you beat the game, you access the bonus Leech Hunter, which I didn't really play a lot of because honestly, this game just felt like it dragged a lot. And of course, you do realize Rebecca has probably been awake for over 40 hours by the time she gets into the mansion in Resident Evil. Yeah, so Resident Evil Zero, what do I really think of it? It's interesting, but I don't know if they really should have made it because it doesn't do that much to advance the story, although it does explain that James Marcus was, in fact, the perpetrator who infected the mansion lab. Out of revenge, I shall get revenge and umbrella, and then the world will burn in hate! And if you do like the old school Resident Evils, I definitely recommend picking it up, although I just don't think it does much to advance the story like I mentioned before, and you can honestly skip it. Yeah, so you can get Resident Evil Zero pretty cheap on the GameCube on eBay. It's not that expensive, although I do recommend getting the upgraded versions on the PC, the PS4, and the Xbox One. Yeah, so that wraps up this episode on Resident Evil Zero. Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Resident Evil 2, the remake! Oh my god, yes! So ever since Resident Evil 1 was remade on the GameCube in 2002, many fans like myself are all wondering, you know what, I can't wait for the Resident Evil 2 remake to happen, I mean it's gonna look as awesome as Resident Evil 1 that was remade, and it's awesome and stuff, man, yeah! But then after that we kinda got a little bit of a half-assed GameCube port of the game, okay, whatever. And then Resident Evil 4 comes out, and I'm like, it would be so awesome if they remade Resident Evil 2, like Resident Evil 4, focusing more on the action this time? Well, then after that, we got Resident Evil 5, 6, 7, Revelations, and pretty much the kitchen sink. But no Resident Evil 2 remake whatsoever. So by the time Resident Evil 7 was about to come out, there were rumors that Capcom was working on a Resident Evil 2 remake. Is it finally time, man? Is it finally time for the remake to come out? Well, Resident Evil 7 first. And then after that, at E3 2018, they finally revealed Resident Evil 2 has been remade! Yeah! So I went to E3 2018 trying to play Resident Evil 2, and the line was really, really long. Holy shit, I didn't get a chance to play it, but I did get to take some pictures with the zombies. Man, it's been a long time since that happened. And the T-Virus hasn't infected me yet. Uh... Range! Range! So, January 2019, about 21 years after Resident Evil 2 came out on the PlayStation, Resident Evil 2 came out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Well, it would have been nice to actually have Resident Evil 2 come out 20 years after in 2018, but, you know, in 21 years, Resident Evil 2, the original, is now old enough to drink. So if you thought Capcom improved the original Resident Evil with its remake, holy crap, man. Remake is an understatement. I mean, this almost feels like a brand new reimagined version of Resident Evil 2 that we know and love, and it's made even better. I mean, how could you already improve on perfection? 
So rather than doing the fixed camera angle just like the original Resident Evil remake back in 2002, they actually went with the Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6 method, but they actually made it better. But this time the gameplay is not entirely focused on the action. And I'm proud to say they actually not only retained, but they brought back the survival horror aspect of Resident Evil, which we loved from the first three games and Code Veronica before it became more action-packed like Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. And just like with any Capcom remake, they did recast the voice actors. This time Nick Apostolides plays Leon Kennedy and Stephanie Panicello plays Claire Redfield. And both are really, really good, although not as memorable as the cheesy voice acting from 20 years ago, but still, they are very, very good performers, and I enjoyed their performances very much. And they definitely like to drop a lot of F-bombs in this game. Yeah, pretty much ever since Resident Evil 5, you know, the series' language has kind of gotten a little, uh, a lot more R-rated in recent years, yeah. I'll get you, you fucker! <laughs> Whoa, whoa, Claire, uh, there's a child present there, but holy shit, that was good. And I do like a lot of the voice actors, you know, Annette Birkin and Brian Irons aren't all dramatic and Shakespearean. And I remember Brian Irons in the original was like, THEY DESTROYED MY CITY! Now he's just more of a sleazy cop. What are you gonna do to her? None of your fucking business. And Annette Birkin's no longer, well, my husband made the G virus. Yeah, she's actually a lot more sympathetic in this game, and you kind of feel for her a little. And also, you do hear TJ Rotolo as William Birkin, and you kind of hear a bit of his Frank West. Uh, uh, I covered wars, you know! Now, I have to say, probably the greatest thing about the Resident Evil 2 remake is that not only are the graphics are in, you know, much, much higher detail, like there's no more loading time in between going inside doors, so it's more of a seamless experience, and pretty much because they're using more of the Resident Evil 7 engine, they did add a lot of elements from Resident Evil 7 in, kind of like, you know, the lock clipper and uh, the fuses that you have to use to power up some of the gates. Completely borrowed from Resident Evil 7. And Capcom actually used the lack of lighting, and especially the sound design, to give you a much, much more creepy experience, because in the original PlayStation version, you know, all the areas are, like, really, really lit up because, you know, the limitations at the time, but wow, the police station looks fucking frightening. Like, holy shit, like, this one area that you're familiar with, it's flooded with water, you know, there's boards everywhere, you know, it's a lot more derelict, actually, wow. And of course, the zombies look gruesome as shit. And holy shit, if you thought William Birkin looked scary as a whole bunch of pixels back on the PlayStation, oh my god, he looks frightening as fuck! And oh yeah, the liquors are scary too. And holy shit, the G embryos. Now, the G embryos, which you only encountered probably once in the original game, you encounter a lot of them in the sewers. Like, holy shit. And oh yes, let us talk about this guy, Mr. X. So in the original PlayStation version, Mr. X only chased you in the B scenarios, but this time in both Claire and Leon's A and B scenarios, Mr. X appears pretty much after you douse the flaming helicopter, and oh boy, when you hear that thumping and you hear that music, you know Mr. X is on your tail. Holy shit, holy shit, holy shit! Oh my god, Mr. X, please don't kill me! Oh, god, not the Sonic statue! Yeah, so you can't exactly take your time and solve puzzles because Mr. X is going to be on your tail pretty much most of the game until the end. I'm trying to push the bookcase puzzle, but Mr. X is thumping his- ah! And while the remake does follow a lot of the beats of the original, there are a lot of differences in this game. So in the beginning, you encounter Marvin Brana, and he smashes a zombie's head for you. Thanks, Marvin, you're awesome. But then once you get all the medallions, Marvin says he can't go with you. And at this point, I was actually expecting Marvin to, you know... But then you do re-encounter him as a zombie. Rest in peace, Marvin. 
And they actually do expand the star's office this time. And Albert Wesker has his own office. Yes, he has his own office. And you do actually see the star's photo from the original game, but you can't exactly pick it up. And I was kind of hoping that they would actually redo this photo, but have Edward Dewey and Kevin in the photo this time. And also, sadly, the Brad Vickers zombie is not in this game, but you do see Brad Vickers on a poster advertising the Raccoon City Police Department job fair. Brad Vickers, learn to act like a chicken. And they actually did change a lot of puzzles around. They did move around a couple of the puzzles and they did repurpose a couple of the puzzles. Like, you know, the library when you have to actually push the bookcases in the right order. But this time you actually have to push them to get across a passage so you can get to the clock tower. And in the original, when you encountered Ada Wong, she says she was looking for her boyfriend John, who worked for Umbrella. Yeah, because there was a puzzle, John and Ada, in the original game. But this time she doesn't mention any of that and says she is for the FBI. Agent Ada Wong, FBI. I kind of like that, actually. And actually, Robert Kendo from the Kendo Gun Shop actually has a lot more emotional depth to him rather than... Well, by the time he noticed something was wrong, the entire city was filled with zombies! He actually has a daughter who's been infected, and he's like, Just give us some privacy, man. Just give us some privacy. It feels, man. It feels. Ode to you, Robert Kendo. And ode to you. And they do actually change the areas up a bit. So this time the sewer area is a lot bigger and they got rid of the small factory area. And actually the Umbrella Lab is a lot shorter in this game. They combined the Ivy monsters with the zombies, creating you know, new Ivies, which are kind of a combination of zombie plant monsters who are scary as fuck. Oh my God. Oh, those Ivies. You better fry them like a bitch. <sighs> And also, if you're playing Leon scenario, Ada has a hacking gun. Yes, a hacking gun back in 1998. Where can I get one of those? And also, there's a Stars USB dongle. Now, I know USB ports have been available since 1996 or so, but they weren't really mainstream until probably the really early 2000s, so I do kind of feel like the Stars USB dongle is a bit out of place, but, you know, probably since Raccoon City's been funded by Umbrella, I guess they can afford, you know, USB stuff. And there actually is a new location in Claire's scenario, which is the Orphanage, where you play as Sherry after Brian Irons takes her away, and then you gotta escape from Brian Irons after throwing acid in his face and turning him basically into Two-Face. You either die a villain or become a villain. I don't know. Ben was a reporter, but he actually locked himself in a jail cell to be safe. But in this game, he was actually locked in by Brian Irons, and you have to actually, you know, get the parking pass out of him. But then Mr. X comes out and smashes his brains like a scrambled egg. Ugh. So in this game, Irons does get killed by a William Birkin embryo, and this time Mr. X is actually killed by William Birkin himself. Plot twist! But in Leon's scenario, just like in the original, you do fight Mr. X at the end, and Ada does throw you the rocket launcher like in the original. And in this game, they do play up the Ada and Leon romance a lot better than they did in the original. Mostly how they handle the Ada and Leon romance in the Dark Side Chronicles. Although when Ada does get shot, it is emotional, but not as overly dramatic and as memorable as the original. And I do kind of miss Leon going, Hey, no! This is what everyone's been dying for. <laughs> so just like in the original, you don't exactly get, you know, the full ending after you beat the A scenario, but then when you beat the B scenario, you do get the full fight with William Birkin and holy shit, he looks much more gruesome at the end of this game. And they do a bit of a nod to the original too with the eyeball and stuff. And this game does kind of pair up Leon and Claire a little more. Cher is like, are you guys gonna adopt me? Are you boyfriend and girlfriend? And also in Claire's scenario, Claire's like, so Sherry, what do you want to do when we get out of here? Well, I want to see where you live. Well, I gotta take a shower. Ooh, I smell really bad, don't I? Well, Claire, you basically were traveling around in a sewer, kind of filled with piss, shit, and a lot of other dirty shit, and probably every bacteria known to man. So yeah, I think you're gonna need about 10 showers to clear all that up. So once you finish the B scenario, you do unlock the fourth survivor with Hunk, which is every bit as difficult as the original, but you do get a little more ammo and some healing items. And then after that, you unlock Tofu, which is every bit as impossible as the original one. 
And a couple of weeks after the game was released, they actually added some new DLC called The Ghost Survivors, where you get to play as Robert Kendo trying to escape the city from the zombies, you get to play as the mayor's daughter after she escapes from Brian Irons, and you get to play as another Umbrella Soldier, and you do get to play as the sheriff as the beginning, in kind of more of a, you know, fend yourself against the zombies type of minigame, and they're all really good, although they are really short and they could all be beaten within 10 minutes, but it is nice DLC. And if you actually paid for the Deluxe Edition, you actually get to unlock the original PlayStation music, and even after 20 years, it still fits in so well with the atmosphere. Oh my god, just hear it, man. Anybody here? And also, you do get to unlock the original 1998 costumes, which look really good on the characters. And obviously, when you first play it, you're probably going to spend around 8 or so hours trying to beat the game. But once you get the hang of it, it flows a lot like the original, and then you can beat it within like 2 hours or less. And of course, if you can beat the game within 2 hours without using a lot of saves, you can unlock the infinity weapons. And if you can actually beat the hardcore mode under 3 hours and with very, very minimal saving, which is really, really hard, you get to unlock the infinite rocket launcher, the minigun, and the infinite machine gun and make zombie killing so much fun, baby. Oh, yeah. So Resident Evil 2 back in the day was already a perfect game, like the epitome of a perfect Resident Evil game, and then the remake completely surpasses it and blows it out of the water in almost every single way. Not only are the graphics and the voice acting improved, the atmosphere is a lot scary, the sound design is amazing, and you know, there's a lot more emotional touch to the story, just like in the original. This is a game that surpasses the classic one, and is going to be a classic, and I can't wait for the Resident Evil 2 Remake Remake in another 20 years, where we can probably play it by probing it into our minds. Whoa! Alright guys, so that ends this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about Resident Evil 2 The Remake. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think Mr. X is coming, guys! Okay, guys, Mr. X will find me here. Oh, come on! Not the popcorn! Welcome to Awesome Video Game Memories, where we talk about awesome memories about video games. I'm Ryan, and the game we're going to talk about today is Resident Evil 3! The Remake! Oh my god, it's out! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, Jill, I love you! Now, I do have to admit, Resident Evil 3 is not one of my favorite Resident Evil games. I always felt that Resident Evil Code Veronica was the true Resident Evil 3, but Sony had rights to all the Resident Evil numbered games. So they were like, you know, Resident Evil 3 has to be on our console. And that other game for the Dreamcast has to be Code Veronica without a number. So right during the middle of this quarantine pandemic, the Resident Evil 3 demo came out and it's pretty short, and I was really, really impressed. Wow, the graphics look amazing, just like Resident Evil 2 Remake. Oh, there's my Jill. Oh, my bae, oh, Jill. And holy crap, Nemesis! Oh, my God! And so I know the original Resident Evil 3 on the PlayStation did have dodge mechanics, although they were a little not responsive. But this time you have a dodge mechanic with the R1 button, and it's a lot easier to avoid Nemesis this time, and a whole bunch of other enemies, too. So during my time in quarantine in 2020, Resident Evil 3 finally came out for the PlayStation, Xbox One, and the PC, and being a Resident Evil purist, I got it on the PlayStation 4. So this is where opinions of the Resident Evil 3 remake are kind of mixed, and I do agree with a lot of them. And just to start things off, we don't have the amazing, awesome PlayStation intro from the original. Oh my god, like the part where the RPD comes, and then they draw their guns against the zombies? The part was so awesome, man, and it's not here. And just like some of the DLC from Resident Evil 7 and the Resident Evil 2 remake, we have live action actors doing a lot of the news segments. And then we have the zombie pandemic happening and it's not as intense as the original PlayStation version, which I do kind of miss. And we actually begin in a first person view, just like Resident Evil 7 in Jill's apartment. And you get to see how it looks like in 1998. Ah, uh, there's Jill in her sleepwear and oh my God, she's turning into a zombie. I know this isn't canon, this has to be a dream, right? Whew, thank God this was just a dream. So Jill's in her apartment in 1998, and she and the rest of the STARS members are suspended. Suspended? 
for just doing their jobs? Oh yeah, Brian Irons is an asshole who suspended them for inquiring about the whole umbrella thing, you know, because he's on Umbrella's payroll and shit. And then we see a pizza delivered by good old Brad Vickers. Ah, good old chicken heart. He can still deliver a good pizza. Or get someone else to deliver a pizza with a note saying like, yeah, we're gonna get out of the city, man. We're gonna expose Umbrella for who they are. So as Jill's contemplating on her next move to get the hell out of Raccoon City, Nemesis breaks into the apartment, holy shit, like a deranged fanboy! Stars! And the Nemesis encounters are definitely a bit more frequent than they were in the PlayStation version, but you can easily see them coming and they won't like surprise you at all, you know, like the PlayStation version where I was on like Danger Health in red, tried to get back to the safe room, and then Nemesis was like, Stars, bitch, and punches me the fuck out. And I lost like an hour worth of save. Yeah. And the original game had a shit ton of backtracking and a whole bunch of puzzles. This game is definitely a lot shorter and a lot more streamlined. Meaning there's a lot less puzzles, there's a lot more action scenes, and it kind of goes more into like a linear fashion. Yeah, like Raccoon City doesn't feel as big as it did in the original. And they do change the enemy placement a bit more in this game. Like, you know, the giant spiders and the giant fleas that were in the original? They kind of have their own little section now where the spider kind of grabs Jill and totally makes out with her. Ugh, and then Jill vomits all that shit. Holy fuck! So they kind of take over this little power plant section in the game. Oh my god, this looks like the most horrible corridor ever. It looks like something out of Doom Eternal or Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Holy shit. I know Jill is smelling things in the game, but you can really smell it from here for some reason. And it's so crazy when you're trying to push back the power to bring the power back, like the camera angle changes and you see the spiders coming at you. You're like, holy shit, I gotta like do this thing now or else the evil spiders are gonna fucking kill me. And they infect you with a parasite, so you, you have to use herbs to actually get rid of them. And sadly, this is the only section in the game where you counter the giant spiders and the giant fleas because they're confined to their one section rather than they're spread out through the game. So let's talk about the movie posters and all the advertisements in this game, man. You know, I'd love to see that movie. There's a debate between Dr. Light and Dr. Wily about robotics happening in 1998. I think this is the year when Mega Man X4 and 8 were new. So I wonder what they'd be debating about. Granted, they're not infected by the T-Virus. And yes, Carlos is in this game, although he looks a lot different. He looks a little more scruffy looking, you know, a little more battle worn. He's not like handsome Carlos from the previous game. And you do have a lot more boss encounters with Nemesis in this game, and he does change forms a lot. And by the time you get the grenade launcher, you can actually launch mines that can stop Nemesis in his tracks when he's like, you know, hopping on the roofs like he's Batman or something. Stars on the roof, man. And there are a bit of scenario changes in this game because you actually control Carlos going inside the old RPD station and you get to see zombie Brad Vickers actually bite Marvin Brana so now you know how Marvin became a zombie. And yes, the liquors are back, but only inside the police station, but they still suck balls! And not only is Jill a badass in this game like she always is, she curses a lot. She's like, fuck this, fuck that, fuck you nemesis! like yourself to put out a few flames. <sighs> Fuck you. Ah, oh, that's my girl, my Jill, my waifu, ah. Uh. And so if you thought the beta and the gamma hunters in the original were bad, holy shit, man. So once you encounter the beta hunters in the sewer, holy crap, man, they're so fucking huge. I think these things are like fucking 10 feet tall and they can swallow you whole, but they're weak to flame rounds from the grenade launcher, which is good. Ooh, because I don't want to get swallowed by one of those motherfuckers. So once you bring Jill to the hospital like in the original to find a vaccine for the T-Virus, you have to find a Dr. Bard, and Dr. Bard is a bit of an asshole saying, you gotta free me from all this man because I gotta get out of here, I'm important, and I got the vaccine for the T-Virus. When you're in the hospital, man, oh shit, this is when you encounter the fucking hunters. And I know you encounter hunters in this 3D engine just like in Revelations, but man, the hunters are mean motherfuckers in this game. And you actually have to get rid of their shell first before you can kill them, so they can take a little while to kill, but they'll lunge at your throat if you don't dodge or get out of the way right away. Fucking hunters. Yeah, do I really want to go inside that room? Yeah, I kind of have to, right? 
So once you get the vaccine for Jill, Tyrell is trying to contact the US government to hopefully not nuke Raccoon City, so kind of like Resident Evil 4. So you have to defend Jill and Tyrell against a horde of zombies and hunters and you get a whole bunch of ammo, but believe me, ammo runs out very, very quickly in this game, although you do get quite a bit of it. And I do have to address this, yes, the big grave digger worm is not in this game, which is a huge disappointment because I thought that boss was pretty fucking crazy in the original. Completely gone probably to make the flow of the game move a lot faster but you know I really miss that thing it should have been in there so once you're done with the hospital you go down to the underground secret umbrella lab where you're trying to contact the US government to not nuke Raccoon City and then yeah you see all these tyrants and all these hunters in these tubes and let me guess they're gonna break out and scare the shit out of me. Holy shit, I was totally right but at least it was just the hunters and not the tyrants because if everyone in those tubes came out I would probably shit my fucking pants. So sadly, Nemesis kills Tyrell, and then you find out that Nikolai, one of the mercenaries who used to work for Umbrella, is actually working for another company saying, I have to get rid of Umbrella, and I have to get the vaccine, and I'll be rich, and I'll record all your battle data, Jill, using 1998 cameras. Hey, these Umbrella computers are a little too advanced to exist in 1998. I doubt Alienware had computers that advanced. I mean, what are these, like Pentium 2s or 3s? So once you have the final encounter with Nemesis after killing him probably a hundred times in this game because this motherfucker won't die because he wants stars. And you know what? Jill's gonna give you stars! So you have to power up this huge railgun cannon and then Jill holds that railgun cannon. That's my girl! Oh, that's my girl Jill, yeah! And you have to shoot Nemesis in several different parts and then you finally defeat him and the game is over. Not really because you go to the heliport. Sadly, Barry's not piloting the helicopter this time because Probably in this canon, he's in Canada, for good reason. Carlos and Nikolai get into a brawl with Carlos getting the upper hand and then Nikolai's like, if you let me live, I shall give you all the battle data and we sell for money, 1998 money, and address it for 2020 where inflation is probably going to be millions of dollars. But we decide to leave the asshole Nikolai down there to get nuked by Raccoon City and the game is over. And that ends Resident Evil 3 Remake. So Resident Evil 2 Remake took an average of 8 hours per campaign and you had quite a few campaigns. But sadly Resident Evil 3 has one campaign and it took me about 4 hours to finish. Yes, we'll say it Angry Joe style. <laughs> Without any help. And is that a bad thing? Well, considering Resident Evil 3 was a pretty short game to begin with, I was hoping they would make it a bit longer, but four hours, I don't know if that really justifies the $60 price tag. But once you complete the game, you get some points, and then you can use those points to unlock infinite ammo and other weapons. And the biggest crime in this game is there's no mercenaries. No, Resident Evil 3 was the game where mercenaries originated from, and there's no mercenaries in this game. Although I do admit Resident Evil 3's version of Mercenaries is the weakest one, but it was still a fun mode to play in the original. Completely gone, you know, they could have made or remade Mercenaries. But then again, this game came with Resident Evil Resistance, which uh, I don't think is a good replacement for it since it's multiplayer, but uh, I guess so. I mean, I would have liked Mercenaries though. And also, once you do beat the game, you get to unlock the classic Stars costume for Jill. Ah, oh, my bae. So, Resident Evil 3 Remake. Did it make the impact that Resident Evil 2 Remake did? Well, kind of yes, but mostly no, because Capcom had a chance to really, really enhance this remake, make it longer than four hours, you know, expand more on the lore, on the characters, which they did, which is good, but the game just felt too short and they removed things from the game, like gone are the puzzles. I mean, Resident Evil 2 Remake had puzzles in it while still keeping, you know, the Resident Evil 4 gameplay, but you know what? I would have preferred to have more puzzles, you know, more gameplay. And I miss the Gravedigger, yes, as scary as that shit was, I do miss the Gravedigger worm, and I do miss seeing the, you know, the flea monsters out in the open more. And I wish there was like a whole other section of giant spiders and flea monsters in the Umbrella Lab or the hospital. But you know, those Gamma Hunters were pretty scary by themselves anyways, because they could swallow you whole, so yeah, I guess I'll take that. So is Resident Evil 3 Remake worth the $60 price tag it's going for probably at the recording of this video in 2020? You know what? I would say wait it out. Wait for it to go down to 30, possibly 15 during a Steam sale or a PlayStation sale or an Xbox Live sale, but I recommend not really paying full price for this game. I mean, I love my Jill. I really do. And she's so hot in this game. Oh yeah, but you know, 
you might want to wait a little while, pay a little less money, and you'll get your money's worth. All right, guys, so that ends this episode of Awesome Video Game Memories about the Resident Evil 3 remake. And you know what? Jill still my bae. Uh. You think I don't know how to fuck you up? Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and make sure to check out these other videos and also make sure to follow me on social media and check out the official Battle Geek Plus website. Take care.